and aldermen today are synonymous. So if, if, that, if that's a conflict, the committeeman today raises money for his aldermanic races and, 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 and also raises money for his committeeman races. So that, that's more of a conflict than, uh, than uh, having a father who is, is pledged here and will guarantee that in fact that he's not going to be part of the next aldermanic election. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mel. Aaron, if you could take uh, schools in one more minute, please, to respond, if you'd like. I, I'll just be real brief. There's, there's actual conflict and then there's perceived conflict, and, and both can be as damaging as the other. It, if, if there's actual conflict, then when, when the elections are, are run and the people that are watching to make sure that the elections are run fairly and smoothly are the same people that are also in power and also on the ballot. So for example, who's appointing the election judges for this race coming up in two weeks? The current committeeman. He's also on the ballot. That, that's, that's also a potential conflict of interest. The, the family thing, it, it, it's a perceived as well as an actual conflict. And, and what I'm so concerned about is these su super low voter turnouts and people don't have confidence and faith in the system that it's fair. And, and when we have a family that's basically been over the ward for 40 plus years, now people don't believe in the system. Big Mel, if you could uh, just one second. Sure. O only the 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 fact that he's talking about the low turnout. Our ward is is almost every time had a higher turnout than most every ward around us. The wards that, the wards that, that that really don't have the turnout are some of the ones on the lakefront, where some of the people just don't want to go out to to uh, vote. The next question you said. Actually, we're just going to wrap it up here. If you want to go ahead and make a final statement, just maybe keep it to about a minute. Uh, you know, your final final pitch here tonight. Well, thank you for coming out. You know, what I've enjoyed about the being uh, alderman when I was alderman and committeeman was the fact to, to be able to be in this auditorium here talking about everything from dog parks to to uh, bailing out the the uh, banks to helping with the ordinances that will in fact uh, be instrumental in the individuals in this ward but the committee of job today uh, if if my opponent thinks that uh, a slice of pizza will have that individual uh, take a chance on violating the law on, on elections. I can't. I, I certainly don't believe that's going to happen. Uh, but it, it, it's a. I, I love this community. I've lived here uh, since I'm. Uh, since I had the opportunity to come from Muskegon, Michigan, to watch the Detroit Tigers play the White Sox. And after the Friday night game and the Saturday game and the Sunday game, walked down, uh, the five of us fellas walked down Fullerton Avenue Beach because we went to a zoo and never had a zoo in Muskegon and was walking down the, the sidewalk on, on the lake and saw a little girl say, Margie, buy me a popsicle. And I turned and looked and that was my wife. And you talk about fate bringing, I went home back to Muskegon, Michigan, quit my job, broke up with my girlfriend, moved to Chicago, and, 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 and uh, n never looked back. I was, I, I believe right now that I'm probably one of the luckiest individuals on the earth. There were two things that, that created uh, an unfortunate uh, situation that I lost the most beautiful, brilliant woman who ran our company and was the greatest mother to a disease called progressive nuclear uh, cerebral palsy, which makes Lou Gehrig a, like a walk in, in the park. And this beautiful, brilliant woman, uh, well, I, I just don't rather not talk about any more about that, but, and then the other thing was, taking a young man who I thought was charismatic and married my daughter and r helped him become governor. And the, one of the biggest disappointments to my, right now with my daughter, my grandchildren to see their father uh, out, of, out of here for 14 years on, on uh, I hate to say this, not being a crook, but being a goof, okay? I, I can't describe it any other way. It's sad, uh, but if it wasn't for those two things, nobody had a better life than me to have.
to I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, no, I just want to wrap you up. Thank you. Okay, we can, I'll wrap it up. Yeah, we can we can talk about Blagojevich maybe another night. Uh, but no, I really appreciate your time here. Thank you very much, Mr. Goldstein, Aaron Goldstein. If you could uh, make a few uh, closing remarks, for sure. Three minutes. Thanks. So. Wow, look at that. It, we, we, we wait a little longer, I'll get even more, right? Do you have a, a four on that card? <laughs> we, we say thank you a lot, and, and that's the common courtesy, but I, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for, for coming. Uh, this is a small part of democracy. And, and it, it seems like a simple phrase. It seems like a, a simple word. But when we're talking about democracy with a small d, it's so crucial to our country, to our city, to our ward. And the question is, how do we want to go forward with our democracy? It's pretty distinct options you have here. We can, we can continue on with the last 40 years, or we can break away from it. Imagine if everyone in the ward is part of it, not just the ones that got jobs, not just the ones that, that help secure votes for the commitment, but everyone's a part of this democracy. Imagine if someone who hasn't voted for the last 20 years because they just don't believe in the system, they believe it's rigged, and now they come and they vote. See, because let, let me tell you a little, little trick that, that a lot of candidates know, but when we have voter lists when we go talk to people. And on these voter lists, we can see the people who have voted for the last four, five, six, seven ad nauseum elections. Well, who is a candidate going to speak to? They're going to speak to the regular voter. Why? Because past is prologue. What you did in your past is what you're going to do on March 15th, which means you're going to vote. So the candidate, in order to be efficient with their time, is going to speak to the person that regularly votes. What if? We had twice the voter participation. The committeeman talks about how, oh, we're so much better than the surrounding areas. We're talking about 10% voter participation. That's disgusting. And what happens? Those 10% are the only ones that the candidates are going to go talk to. What if we had it 20? What if we had 30? God forbid, what if we had it 50? Think of all the new ideas that come into play. <coughs> Think of that. Like, hey, Maybe that parking meter deal's a bad idea. Maybe there's some things we could have corrected. Maybe there's things we could do better. If we had more participation, more involvement, more faith in the system. And how do you get faith in the system? You got to get people involved. Not just the people who are your buddies. Not just the people you gave a job to. Everyone and you don't take advantage of the system. You don't have a senior day. You don't have a bingo day. And, and you give them food and you take them over to vote. You don't take advantage of it. You believe in the system and you have everyone believe in it. So we have fair elections. And then if you're ever in the judicial system, you have fair judges. And then you have participation. And that's what this election is about. Thank you. Aaron Goldstein, Dick Mel, thank you so much for your time. We have a round of applause for both our candidates. Enjoyed it. Thank you. We're just going to take a teeny weeny break, so don't get up from your seats. Just talk amongst yourselves while we uh, get Harish Patel settled at the table. Emphasis on teeny break because my alarm clock goes off at 2 a.m. here, so we're going to keep it. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Sorry. Where do you guys live? Uh, just down the street. I'm Albany and Sunnyside. Albany and Sunnyside. Okay, we're at um, Christiana and Grace. Okay. Yeah, I've been there for a year and a half. Like your three old daughter.
what is, uh, tell me, what is your, uh,